Hello, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Good, good, good evening, everyone. Welcome to ABU live seminar session again on post COVID 19 higher education and career. My name is Long from Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation, ABU. So I'm your host today. So for those who have missed out the previous session, always feel free to come to uh, replay the video on our Facebook page and also YouTube link. So today we're going to have our our, our topic on career on cybersecurity. I believe on IoT is getting uh, 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 getting more popular now. Our e-wallet they keep on increasing the demand on, on it. So it actually also increased. Yes, it actually provides us more convenience, but at the same time, it also creates a threat of cyber attack. So while waiting for more people to join in to, to our live today. Let me shout again. We have our seminar. We have more sessions coming out until 15 July. We still have talking about postgraduate. We have our alumni, uh, Jen Wong, who will be joining us. At the same time, we still have actual study. We have FinTech session as well. So for more updates or information, you can also always visit to our website at www.apu.edu.my and also follow our Facebook page. So now we have Dr. Julia and Dr. Vanessa here with us to talk to you on career of uh, cybersecurity. Welcome, Dr. Julia and Dr. Vanessa. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello, hello. Okay, now you guys here. Hello, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Lung, for having both of us in this webinar this evening. Uh, it is a great pleasure of mine and my colleague, Dr. Vinesha, to be here. My name is Dr. Julia. I'm a cybersecurity lecturer under the Network Security and Forensic Cluster. And I'm also the newly appointed head of Cybersecurity and Forensic Research Center. And with me today is a good friend of mine, Dr. Vinesha. She's also a cybersecurity lecturer and cybersecurity engineer and trainer in Asia Pacific University. 
both me and Dr. Vinisha are going to share our insights on the topic for today, which is careers in cybersecurity. So I'll pass it to Dr. Vinisha to start with the introduction to today's topic. Thank you, Dr. Thank Julia. You. And thank you, Long, for having me here. Okay, um, my name is Dr. Vinisha, and as uh, my colleague introduced just now, I'm a lecturer, I'm a cybersecurity lecturer in Asia Pacific University. I'm also a cybersecurity engineer and trainer, training um, corporate certifications for students and also corporate employees. And we are here today, hopefully not to bore you guys, but we're going to enlighten you guys about the careers that we have in cybersecurity. Not just that, we also will tell you guys how are you going to take this, take the leap forward into venturing in cybersecurity, taking up cybersecurity, what you need and why do you need them and how do you become a proper cybersecurity expert. Okay, so Dr. Jira, can we start? All right, okay, uh, let's start. Now, before we move into why or why we are we looking at a career in cybersecurity, now guys, think about this. What is really cybersecurity? I mean, what do you know about cybersecurity today? And which field requires cybersecurity in the first place? Now, if you think about it, yes, we had the COVID pandemic for the last couple of months. Now, this has also created a vulnerability in this situation where most of the cyber attack were leveraging in every different businesses. I mean, if you look at the news, just about a month ago, Honda was attacked. Honda, Honda, big company, you know Honda, right? I mean, some of, some of us are driving Hondas and all. Now, Honda is a car manufacturing company. They had a cyber attack just about a month ago, all right? So... Now, when, I, when we look at cybersecurity as it is, today it is no longer a standalone career, a standalone um, technology, or a standalone industry as it is. Now, when you think about cybersecurity, when it comes to your mind, every single business aspect, we look at the education sector, we look at the logistics, we look at the um, supplier, manufacturing, banking, institution, military, government, Every single one of this industry requires cybersecurity today. Now, ask yourself this question, guys. Just think about this. Why do we need cybersecurity in all this non-related to computer or IT industry? For example, we're talking about um, military. We're talking about education. Now, why is cybersecurity that important? Now, if you think about it, you have, you, um, our Mr. Lowe has said just now, IoT is becoming one of the most popular uh, industry or topic today. And in fact, if you if you heard of our previous talk about smart cities, smart devices, you and I both know the use of technology is increasing today. Now, you're sitting back in your home or wherever you guys are right now, you're watching our webinar through a, perhaps your smartphone or your laptop or probably a tablet. Now, every one of these devices are digital technology, right? Same thing goes to industries today. When you look at banking, bankings are all automated today. You can do your online banking through your smartphone. You don't have to queue up to the bank. When you're using your emails, when you're, let's say, want to purchase a smartphone online, or, or you're going shopping, you're doing shopping online through Lazada, through Shopee, and so on. Now, every single different businesses uses technology today. So now when technology is in place, yes, it is efficient. Right? It makes lives easier. But at the same time, when you're looking at devices, you're looking at networks here, you're looking at chips here, you're looking at um, data packets here. So all these things are IT-centric. And because it makes your life easier, at the other hand, we are looking at cyber attackers. We're looking at hackers. We're looking at all this freelance hacker. They just want to... Uh, launch an attack. Now, why are they so interested in having perform an attack? Why are they so interested in hacking stuff? I mean, ask yourself this question. How many of you actually came up to someone who's in the IT field or let's say cybersecurity field and say, hey, do you know how to hack Facebook? I mean, it's a very simple question, but you do have that question in you, right? So why is this happening? Now, 
attackers or hackers are looking at leveraging certain things out of cyber attacks. Now, when we talk about industries, now, one reason could be they just want to make some profit. They just want to make some money. I mean, just about a year ago, we had an issue. We had an attack on a, on a U.S. company who is manufacturing hearing aid devices. Now, hearing aid, you know, for, for those people who can't hear, it's just a hearing aid company. The problem here is the company was running on a very old system in doing their transactions, right? So who would have thought that that hearing aid company could be a victim of an attack? Nobody, right? But through that attack, the company suffered loss of about 90 million USD. So again, here, guys, remember, in the coming times, like say a couple of years ago, now cybersecurity is going to be the um, mother of all ships. You know, in every industry, they will require cybersecurity. And in fact, now I'm going to bore you one more. I'm going to share with you one more thing here. Just a couple of uh, days ago, probably last week, when we were talking about cyber attacks on education system, can you imagine when we're talking about education system here, we're looking at schools, we're looking at university, whether they are IT-centric or non-IT-centric here. Now, there were numerous attacks on all these education sectors over the past few months due to, post, uh, due to COVID pandemic. And in fact, the FBI released a map about a couple of days ago last week on the number of attacks happening in schools, education institutions all around US. And there was a lot of attacks. And some of them are ransomware. Okay? So because of these guys, the next big thing from my point of view is that cybersecurity is the next big thing. Now look at the slides. Why do we need a career in cybersecurity apart from whatever example that I told you before? Number one, unlimited growth yes in cyber security we are looking at unlimited growth here why because the learning just never stops as long as this technology keep coming up in the market as long as there are um systems in place to make your life easier we need cyber security experts to learn the system because at the other side in a parallel world the hackers and attackers are sitting down there and they are also learning this technology, finding for loopholes there and trying the best, their best to get into this particular systems or devices, right? And another thing, when you look at technology itself, it's not just about computers or smartphones these days. It's all about your digital data. It's all about your chips, your sensors. It's all about your devices, network. So there are many different fields in the cybersecurity itself. And we look at securing application, securing devices. We're looking at, um, what is this called? Uh, uh, forensic as well. We're looking at tracing back. So there's unlimited growth and the field itself is huge in cybersecurity. Then we go on to plenty of variety. Why variety here? As I mentioned before, many devices, many networks, many technology. Now, let me ask you this. Do you know today in terms of hacking, we're not just looking at sitting down at the back of the screen, writing a few scripts and getting access into systems. Today, we have hardware hacking. I'm not sure if you know about that. A very simple hardware hacking here is a key logger. You know what's a key logger? You plug it into the device, you plug into the computer, and everything that a person types is captured in that small mini USB key logger. Now, the worst thing here is that that key logger is a device, right? plugging into your computer, you may say, hey, you know what? Obviously, I can see if there's a USB stick plugged into my PC, right? Now, what if you bought a computer or a new device? Let's say you bought it over the internet. Let's say, I'm not going to say any merchant here. Um, they're selling it, let's say, uh, Apple MacBook. You know how expensive is a MacBook is, right? So let's not talk about MacBook. Let's say you're buying a laptop. It costs about $4,000. And you saw somewhere now online, people are saying it for just $2,000. Of course, you're going to be like, hey, it's super cheap. Let's get our hands on it. Now, would you know if there was a keylogger chipset built into the laptop? Now, not even your antivirus is able to detect that. So here we go again. Hacking is getting more advanced these days, right? So you have plenty of variety of areas to look at under cybersecurity alone. 
And next, if you are a, a, a person who loves solving puzzles, this is your field. Now, a very common question that we always ask, how about the salary? I mean, when you look into career, the next thing, the next question, even when you go for interviews or let's say you're applying for a job, the next thing we're going to ask is, what's the salary like? You want to know what's the salary like in cybersecurity? Now, can you just for a minute think, if you were a cybersecurity expert, what is your salary range here? How much are you looking at? It's a lot. It's high. Trust me, it's high. Let me give you a very small example here. Um, I'm not sure if you heard of penetration tester. Now, we have penetration testers, right? That's a posh name for ethical hacker, right? So if you're an ethical hacker, you perform hacks ethically for a good purpose, right? You're looking at a good goal here. Okay, I'm hacking your system to tell you that, you know, there's a flaw in your system. So please block those flaws. So penetration testing is just another job also under cybersecurity. And these people, what they do is, say I'm setting up a new business here, right? So obviously I'm going to have my servers, my network, all these jargons in it and make my business online, all right? Very entrepreneur of my like of me, right? So now when I create this network, this system, this ecosystem of networks, I am going to hire penetration testers probably one or even a group of them to come to my company and now look, here's my company, here's my servers, here's my IPs, here's my computer, everything is connected. Now, please do penetration testing to these devices, right? So we'll look for a penetration tester. They come by to our company for a couple of weeks or so, and they will keep trying to attack our system. And it's legal, ethically. All right. They'll try to launch attacks into my system. And after about a week, they'll come back to me and say, hey, look, these are your vulnerabilities in your system. Um, you have to pluck all these things. And then they would also help us rectify those issues. Now, that's penetration tester. You want to know how much are they paid? Now, penetration testers can charge hourly, right? And the hourly rate is as high as $200. That's hourly. Now, it's not fair if my system is huge and I have multiple networks and computer and IP addresses. Now, in that case, they can charge me based on the IP addresses that I have. That means if one IP address that I have, they could charge me just, say, $2,000 per IP address. So imagine if I have 50 IP addresses running on my company system, how much would that be? And then there... That penetration tester, he wouldn't have to do this penetration penetration testing single-handedly. He could even bring a group of team and do penetration testing. That's just a single teeny tiny example here, guys. Right? So sky high salary. I mean, that's what we're looking for at the end of the day. Huh? Okay, and also non-industry specific, and you covered that. Every industry needs cybersecurity experts today. So you're really non-industry specific. You can go on to any industry you want as long as they have network servers and all these things there, and that's what you do. So that's why a career in cybersecurity. Can we move on? Yeah. So look at this particular table here, guys. This is just a very simple table picked up from Technology 2019. Now, this is talking about career supply and demand. When you look at cybersecurity, do a simple math on this, guys. If you're talking about school teachers, right? So there are candidates who go and take up uh, education or early childhood education, and then their job is basically schools, uh, universities, and so on. But when you look at cybersecurity expert, you go and take up cybersecurity education, right? Which my colleague will cover with that uh, with you guys later. So you are looking at candidates studying cybersecurity, certifying themselves, and so on. But when you look at the job demand, you are needed in every sector there's not a single specific sector here for you it's non-specific sector so imagine the amount of jobs that are available for you today right and if you look at this chart here this was in 2018 now if you look at the numbers there those were the numbers of demand of cybersecurity expert in 2018 alone now they did an estimation of five years projected, which is 2023. And we're still in 2020. 
right? So look at the percentage of growth in terms of demand of job here. Your job is always there, provided you are skilled enough, you are equipped enough, you are there, they need your expertise, you get the job done. So that is the career and supply demand here, all right? Okay, this is something that I want to show you guys. Now, if you don't know, I mean, cybersecurity, we haven't even reached the types of jobs we have in cybersecurity. You might be wondering, what's this person talking? That much of job available there in the cybersecurity alone? Again, like I said, if you study education, you'll become probably a teacher, a single job, uh, job demand teacher, right? But if you're taking cybersecurity, you don't have a single specific job called cybersecurity, no. You have so many different jobs. You have penetration testers, ethical hackers, you have consultants, you have so many different types of jobs here. So take a look at this CyberSec 2020. They released a cybersecurity career pathway here. Now, looking at this chart, now you can just hover your mouse onto any of the roles here. At the, uh, at the very top, you can see there is entry level. You would be able to see there's mid level and advanced level. Now in cybersecurity, there is a career growth and advancement where you equip yourself as you go, right? Of course, you have the common cybersecurity feeder roles in the first part here. We have networking, you have to know about networking, software development, system engineering, financial and risk analysis, security intelligence. This is called the feeder role. Now, once you have all these roles, we're looking at entry levels. So if you just finish, say, your diploma or your degree, you're looking at entry level based on what uh, expertise and how well you've equipped yourself with. So entry level, we're looking at cyber security specialist or technician. Now let's look at this particular cyber security speci uh, specialist or technician. You will see three arrows moving towards the mid level here. That is showing you how do you advance your career? What is your next step? You can be an, an analyst. You can be a consultant or you can even be a tester, penetration tester or vulnerability tester here. But just look at the cybersecurity technician or specialist here. Hover it around. At the current moment, national, internationally, there are 9,232 job opening here. And the average salary we're looking at, 92,000 USD. So let's go to the mid-level. Let's just go to cybersecurity consultant. I mean, we all like that job, right? So look at the amount of arrows there. A cybersecurity consultant can also become an analyst, or you can move on to advanced level. And look at the number of job openings they have. And finally, in the advanced level, you have cybersecurity managers, architect or engineers. Look at the amount of salary they pay you in USD. And of course, this is their average annual salary, guys. So now tell me, is there really no job for cybersecurity? It is there. The cake is there. The frosting and icing is there. All you have to do is equip yourself with the necessary uh, degree, qualification, certification, experience, whatever you need, and go out to the market. Trust me, that is the open door for you. Now let's go on back to our slides. I'm going to show you the next thing here. Look at the next one and look at this. Now, since you're all there high and fly and posh with cybersecurity, I'm not sure about you, but for me, when I heard about cybersecurity, that's all for me. That's what I thought, all right? So when you look at this, the next question is, are we up for it? Do we have what it takes? I mean, it's cybersecurity. I mean, hackers are doing it. Can we do it? So what do you have what it takes? Now, here's just a few, which my colleague is going to, share with you guys now some of it is this look at it of course you need a qualification here and here we're talking about bachelor's degree in cybersecurity, master's degree right but do you know that today having that alone gives you entry level but you gotta equip yourself with even more so what is even more what is more here we're looking at certifications we have so many different certificates uh, certifications is CIS, PPRC, CECC, and more. The list goes on. And the next thing you need to have is experience and practical. Having theory alone is not enough. 
I mean, theory versus practical. Which one do you want? You want someone that knows it all, but when you do it, you can't do it? That's a huge gap there. And finally, the skills and mindset. Now, remember, guys, skills, innovation is learnable. There's nobody who born with a talent say, oh, I'm innovative. No such thing. Innovation and skills, you can acquire them. So if you think like, hey, I don't think I'm an innovative person here. I don't think I don't. I have that skills here. Don't worry. You can always learn them. Innovation is for you to learn. Skills is for you to learn. So remember, if you have the interest, you have what it takes here, just go on. Look at these four different ways for you to come out. Come into cybersecurity and join us. All right. With that said, guys, I'm going to pass on to my colleague here, Dr. Julia. She's going to enlighten you in how do you take these steps to become a cybersecurity expert. Okay. Up over to you, Dr. Julia. Thank you, Dr. Vinesha. Okay. So basically, the basic requirement, if you want to start to take actions on how you can prepare yourself so for a cybersecurity career, of course, definitely the first requirement is always to earn yourself a bachelor's degree. Okay. So a three to four years of bachelor's degree in cybersecurity or any related field, such as the information technology or computer science will do. Okay. Basically what you will learn during the three to four years of uh, duration of bachelor's degree will be covering on the basic grabs of knowledge in terms of the fundamentals of uh, networking, the computer architecture, the introduction to database, definitely introduction to programming. So it looks like not much on the cybersecurity uh, specialism yet during your first year, but all of these fundamentals um, area is very important for you to master in order for you to become the expert okay so you can't become an expert in uh, you can't become a computer architecture specialist if you don't know the com component of the computers okay you need to be an expert you need to know how the processing is working how the memory is working how the uh, catch or registers are working in your computers then only you will know on how to either to defend or to uh, attack those components in your computer. Okay, so basically three to four years bachelor's degree. Okay, you will learn about the fundamentals of networking, computer architecture, a bit on ethical hacking when you move to level two. Okay, cryptography, it's a very important uh, area, okay, where you learn to protect your uh, data and information. Okay, and then definitely a bit on digital forensic. Okay, let's move to uh components which are segregated into smaller components so which means that throughout the duration of your studies three to four years we don't burn burden our student with all those uh specialism module or uh, high level module in year one okay like i mentioned just now year one is basically to introduce you to the fundamentals of everything related to computer Okay, you need to know what is firewall, you need to know what is network, what is IP address, what is database, basically. Okay, then only you can move towards to other uh, specialized uh, modules such as uh, how to attack those particular networks or those particular infrastructure. Uh, and again, in level three, you'll move through uh, practical and much more uh, technical skills, okay, which you will apply later on in your final year project okay so let's see on the APU's available bachelor's and master's program okay so currently in APU we have the bachelor of computer science cyber security okay we have bachelor in computer science with specialism in digital forensic we have the bachelor in information technology with a specialism in information system security okay and we also have the master of science in cyber security Okay, so you can see all those specialized modules in level one, which is the introduction to security technologies and introduction to forensic tools and techniques. So this one, definitely you need to master yourself. Okay, you need to, to, to master those uh, devices or those basic tools and techniques that you need to use in order for you to secure your computer, in order for you to secure your network, in order for you to secure your mobile, the cloud, and so on. 
Okay, so if you don't master these fundamental stuff, when you move to level three, where you need to implement those uh, those uh, knowledge that you have gained during your 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 entry level of the bachelor degrees, uh, if you don't have the um, uh, full knowledge or you don't master it, it's very hard for you to implement it. Okay, basically. So Sorry. Basically, what you need is the entire foundation, which happens in your first year, right, Dr. Julia? Yes, so if yes. you don't go through those first year of important fundamentals, like what Dr. Julia said, you need to learn about networks, you need to learn about databases. I mean, if you don't learn all that, how are you going to get into the hacking part or the ethical hacking part or penetration? It's not going to happen. So first year is basically all your basic principles, your basic knowledge, beautifully planned into your first year for you to get into it, get a hang of it. Now, when you come into the second year, I think Dr. Julia just mentioned, you have this module called ethical hacking. That's where you start off with ethical hacking, guys. So that's how it goes. So basically, I have students asking why, why we need to take this subject. It's too basic for us sometimes, okay? But it's actually if... If you don't master this foundation, okay, you can't be master in the uh, enhanced level or in the advanced level, okay? Because in during your level three, during your master degree, we won't teach you any anymore on what is IP address, what is port numbers, what is MAC address, okay? What is cloud actually? So you have to master in all this uh, fundamentals area. Then only you can move on to the advanced level, okay? And you can you can master the specialized modules. Uh, easily, okay, before you proceed with uh, any implementation or any technical skills or get involved with any professional certification and so on. Okay, it's, so it's yes. really simple, then. just like when you're baking a cake, before you go on and put on the icing, I mean, we love the icing part, right? I mean, before we go to the icing and the design and all these things, you go to the very basic, the flour, the eggs, the baking powder. So that's how it is. Yep. Okay. So basically, master's degree, okay, takes additional one to two years after your bachelor's degree. It's up to you, actually. Either you want to proceed pursuing your studies in master of cybersecurity or you want to get yourself involved with any professional certificates okay but basically we have students coming from other areas or other field of study such as uh, engineering students uh, uh, accounting students coming into uh, the master of science in cybersecurity okay again we will provide them with the uh, foundation okay the prerequisite models where we have the cybersecurity we will we'll introduce to them what is cybersecurity what is digital forensic okay and a few on cybersecurity tools just to just to enlighten them on on how what are the available tools and technologies in cybersecurity and that's being used currently in the market Okay, then we move to the core modules and also elective modules. Okay, basically for master level, we don't teach them any, um, not much on the technical part, but it's much more on how you uh, provide the advanced instruction in protecting the computer networks and also infrastructure from threats. You have to set your mind as uh, on the upper management level because you are now in the current, uh, you are now in the master level, not in the degree level anymore, okay? So you are the one who will uh, come out with what are the uh, policies and procedures, and also you are the one who come out with the risk assessment plan, risk management plan, okay? And uh, you are the one who, who come out with how to carry out the security measures and defense technique in the organization, okay? So basically, master of science in cybersecurity or master level of student is actually to prepare you to become a sophisticated practitioner, okay? All right, so what else from this? Um, okay, other than your bachelor degree, okay? Other than your bachelor degree or master degree, okay? I always... Um, advise my student or encourage my students to go for certification, professional certification. In cybersecurity, you need to be certified, okay? You might have 10 to 20 thousands of students uh, graduated from Bachelor of Computer Science or Bachelor of uh, Cybersecurity, but what makes you uh, different from other students is to get yourself certified, okay? So there are 
uh, list of professional certificates available in the market. Okay, and these certifications are the one provide uh, added value to your degree. Uh, okay, your degree is just only a piece of cert. Okay, but if you go through those advanced training, you get yourself uh, certified as a um, professional. So you get the hands-on practical through uh, some real life simulation provided during the training, during the certification. Okay, you will help, it will help to increase the uh, skills and also expertise. Okay, but I also get question. This is the most uh, frequently asked question coming from students, especially from the cybersecurity uh, and also forensic student. Miss, there are like uh, 20 to 30 uh, certification or professional certificate. Which one should I go for? Which one should I sit for? Because, you know, the, the amount for a professional certificate is not 10 ringgit or 20 ringgit. It is hundreds and thousands of ringgit. So they ask which one is the best for them. Okay, so basically I'll ask my student to pick your focus. Okay, pick your focus and then be an expert in that particular area. Okay, you can't understand or become an expert in Microsoft security unless you have the understanding of Microsoft servers and unless you get yourself to become a Microsoft certified professional. Okay, so basically Microsoft certified professionals are certified professionals who focus on Microsoft information technologies, plans, application, web application, and those who specialize in the field of Microsoft, they focus uh, basically on the technical, the maintenance skill in uh, not only on the starting from the operating system, but also towards the web development. Okay, and my advice is don't try to be a master of every technology uh, or program. Okay, but do become an expert in one. Choose your focus. Okay, doesn't mean that um, you you are in cybersecurity area. Then you have to be an ethical hacker or you have to be a penetration tester. No, I also have students from cybersecurity that not really interested to pursue their career in. Uh, I mean, in as a ethical hacker or as a penetration tester, but they are more towards uh, web application. Okay, so like what Dr. Vinesha mentioned just now, there are various areas that you can explore and you can venture into as your career options. Okay, if you have the skills of programming, for example, you can become the uh, software security expert, okay, because you have the skills of programming uh, uh, and then you know how the programs or the script works and so on. Okay, if you don't want to become uh, anything related to uh, ethical hacker or penetration tester because you think you don't have enough technical skill, don't worry, okay? You can go for security architect, okay? Security architect simply means you need to have the fundamentals or the knowledge of the computer components, okay? How the internal part or the computer architecture of each device works, okay? So it doesn't have to do with anything with uh, hacking or breaking or penetration that uh, penetrate into the system and so on. Okay, you can also choose um, certifications related to risk assessment and risk management. There's a lot of certifications provided under ISACA. Okay, let me share with you. Okay, so if I move to certifications provided in APU, okay? So we have a lot of different, different professional certification, not only covering for ethical hacking, uh, not only covering for pension testing, but we also have uh, certification related to risk assessment and risk management. We have Cisco, okay? Cisco basically on network, okay? And then we also have uh, Microsoft, okay? Basically you can be expert in uh, Microsoft certified professional. Okay, you need uh, maybe you want to become expert in uh, Microsoft servers. Okay, we also have certification coming from AWS. Okay, if you're more on cloud or more on uh, Amazon Web Services. Okay, basically if you are a web developer, you might want you are, might want to consider AWS certificate. Okay, we also have Tech Forte. Okay, Tech Forte. Basically, we have the collaboration with Tech Forte where um, APU students get to spend 50 hours in the security operation center. We have a, a security operation center and they spend 50 hours as a tier one security analyst, analyzing the locks, the incoming and outgoing locks by, uh, 
by seeing the uh, logs coming from our real network. Okay, real network meaning that the feeds are coming from our firewall, the feeds are coming from our IDS, IPS, and wireless devices. Okay, so this is a valuable experience that uh, you can get and then you can bring forward those experience uh, in the professional certification that you might want to take later on. Okay. So we also have um, Rochester, okay? We have the uh, Rochester Certified Cybersecurity Engineer Certificate. Basically, Rochester provide you with the latest uh, content, okay, on uh, becoming uh, an ethical hacker or becoming a good penetration tester with um, uh, updated uh, tools and technologies provided in both theory and also practical skills, okay? I think I'll leave that to Dr. Vinisha later on. She's the ambassador for Rochester. She'll explain more on Rochester if you want to know more on Rochester. Okay. So these are some of the list of certifications provided in APU. Okay. So we have the ISACA CSX Cybersecurity Fundamentals. Okay. This one is a good one for those who, uh, who need to, to test their knowledge and also their skills in the fundamental levels of cybersecurity. So basically, it goes back to what is CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. As a cybersecurity student or as an information system security student, you need to know what is CIA. Okay, don't tell me you don't know what is CIA. Okay, so what is CIA, what is firewall, what is network, what is uh, mobile technologies, uh, devices, Bluetooth, uh, and a bit on cloud. Okay, and then we have also Cisco Certified Network Associate. Okay, some of the students, they are very interested in in uh, moving forward into network okay so we also have a networking modules okay and at the end of the networking modules not only we embed part of the cisco syllabus in our module okay you can also use those content for preparation for your certification okay your professional certificate ccna okay we also work closely with comtia okay we have comtia security plus comtia, comtia network plus and also comtia server plus okay we have a Lease of Rochester uh, certification program, okay, Rochester certified cybersecurity engineer, okay, and then we have Rochester certified cybercrime investigator, we have cyber threat intelligence analyst, and cybersecurity compliance office. Okay, of course, you need to go for the basic one first, uh, the RCCE. After you have been certified as the RCCE, you can move to RCCI and then to CTIA and also CCO. Okay, other stop certificate. Okay, some of you might Mm, not want to do anything about uh, fundamentals part okay you are more you are really an extreme hacker or extreme penetration tester so you are more on high level uh, skill okay so you can opt for uh, CISSP certified information system security professional and also the offensive security certified professional okay OSCP okay OSCP Nothing, I mean, very least less on theory part, it's more on practical part, okay? So you have to become no more coverage in the theory part. So you have to really uh, become an expert in uh, the penetration testing uh, skills, okay? And then it, you have to show the evidence of uh, your ability to penetrate into the given system and so on. So no help, no instructor, nobody but only you. Okay, you might be required to access uh, the server or the network uh, via VPN and then uh, you are required to hack and gain full control over maybe 40 to 50 servers in different networks. Okay, so if you're more on self-study, hands-on approach person, okay, I know some of you are, so you can go for the OSCP, okay? So... I've talked about the uh, basic requirement, which means the first requirement is for you to, of course, to finish your three to four years of bachelor degrees in the related uh, area. Okay, it can be bachelor degrees in cybersecurity, it can be bachelor degree in uh, computer science. Okay, I also share with you what is the importance of the uh, professional certificates. Okay, not only it's for value added, but it's also to test your ability and also your skill and, and then to which area that you want to focus into, okay? So if you are not into ethical hacking, you can go into risk assessment, you can go into risk management, or you can go for uh, security operations center, security analyst, and so on. If 
you're more on ethical hacking, if you're more on penetration testing, you can go for Rochester RCCE, you can go for OSCP, you can go for CISSP. Okay, so other than that, okay, you need to um, also have a out of class experience. Okay, out of class experience simply means to build your portfolio. Okay, how do you build your portfolio? Okay, it's definitely through the internships. Okay, you need to uh, seek opportunities to demonstrate your expertise. Okay, maybe you can join the industry conference uh, and completing relevant projects. I also encourage my students, okay, especially my level three students, most of their assignments, most of their assessment in the class will come up with a at least a prototype. Okay, at least a, a, a successful implementation of either you are securing your computer system or you are providing a prevention towards your computer system. Okay, so all these projects, Okay, all these projects and also your final year project is basically can be uh, exhibit or can be presented in the industry conferences, in the competitions, in the uh, uh, symposium or research uh, competition and so on. Uh, and you look um, for comments coming from the industry's experts and sometimes they might be interested in purchasing your prototype. Okay, and they might be able also to provide you with a better platform for you to host your web, for example, okay, or for you to to uh, run your system without any problems and so on. Because when you you're building up the prototype, you might have some limitation, okay. So I've also bring forward my students' project, especially the FYPs, to uh, international competitions such as the uh, Malaysia Technology Expo, Expo, okay. So. These competition like MTE, the CSMAs, the RSA Conference, Cloud and Cybersecurity Expo are the platform for you to demonstrate your effort, demonstrate your skills, demonstrate your knowledge. Okay, and during this time, you have you get to make a networking uh, or you get to uh, make some contacts with the industry's experts as well. They will come to your booth. They will ask questions. If and they if they are interested, they'll give you their business card. Okay, at the same time, you get a business opportunity or you can get to expand your career. Okay, and then you can also um, enhance yourself by participating in competition and advantage uh, challenges, sorry. Okay, so this one, I think APU students are very good, okay, in, uh, in participating in all the available uh, hacking competition, hackathon competition, okay, it's not only uh, inter-varsity competition, but it also involves international competition. Okay, so we have uh, KPMG Cyber Challenge, we have the Regional Cyber Challenge, we have the F Secure Annual Challenge, okay, we have EY, uh, Asia Pacific Cyber Challenge, and um, not only you're able to test your own skill, but what I learned from the students, okay, what uh, what they sh uh, through what they shared to me previously, okay, they have a student community where they communicate among themselves. Not only APU student with APU student, but also APU student with other university students, and not only in Malaysia, but it's also in different country or different region. Okay, in within this community, they not only share their knowledge, they are not only sharing the tools or the solutions to the challenges that they have been doing together okay but at the same time it helps to train their communication skills and also the ability to work as a team although they are actually competing between each another but this is actually a good platform for them to communicate to share uh, insights uh, solutions and then share all the uh, latest news or uh, latest uh, cybersecurity incidents and so on okay and other than that okay so internship Okay, internship in APU, we have internship. I think most of the university also have internship. Okay, so where you spend three to four months in your chosen uh, company or organization. Okay, what I suggest as a cybersecurity student uh, or information system security, choose a company that is related to your study field. Okay, choose a company that can provide you the best experience in your related field. Okay, so we have... <clears throat> A lot of companies, okay, of course, we have the our career center. Okay, our career center always uh, provide our students with the uh, advice and then with a list of companies related to your uh, study fields, such as cybersecurity. Okay, and um, in order for you to gain the real experience, okay, you get to uh, choose which company that you're going for. Okay, 
and then we also have job shadowing okay basically job shadowing is where you um follow the uh how to say uh a person that works in that organization okay so you can see the real um experience and also you can tail them around uh work alongside them and gain experience of the role of another individual okay and then you can get uh, insight into what particular uh work or or area that they are doing right now okay during your internship period and so on so make use of we have both we have internship we have the job shadowing approach in epu so for epu students please make use of these uh, opportunities okay get enrolled in a uh, company related to your area and also if you get to do or uh, the job shadowing task please do so okay gain as much experience as you can and then come back and then you can have a knowledge sharing with your friends that are not very fortunate like you all right okay so again to recap on my part just now okay i have three main points just now okay for those who looking for actions that you need to take in order for you to prepare yourself for cyber career, uh, cyber security career again one okay is to make sure you have the uh bachelor degree in a related field okay bachelor in cyber security bachelor in computer science bachelor in information technology specialism in information system security okay and then second one is to get yourself certified okay to get yourself certified don't go and take all the professional certificate available if you have a lot of money yes please do so but for entry level student or fresh graduate student i suggest you to pick a focus okay pick a focus focus on that uh, particular area and be expert in that area okay all right and then the third one is to always uh, build your portfolio okay uh, join the internship uh, join the job shadowing opportunities and then uh, try to uh, fit in into the environment of how a cybersecurity professional work in the environment of a cybersecurity company okay so i'll pass it back to dr vinisha to uh, tell you guys on what are the skills and mindset that you need to have in order for you to pursue further in the cybersecurity career okay back to you dr vinisha thank you dr julia that was an amazing session from Dr. Julia. Now, you might be wondering why is it that we're talking about careers and now we're going into the details. Now, I mean, career is as simple as you. Either you're getting the job or you're not getting the job. So what we're doing here is we're giving you the ingredients on how to get a job, right? So um, before I go to skill and mindset, let me just add a bit on the um, values and certification like what Dr. Julia said. Now, Guys, basically, you know you need at least a minimum degree here. So we're looking at bachelor's, right? So you can also proceed further to master's. I mean, that is entirely up to you. But what I want to tell you here is now cybersecurity is not that of a complicated goal for you to look for a job later. At the end of the day, I would say this is the most flexible one. You know why? Because it is entirely up to you. It is in your head. Very simple. If you are the kind of um, candidate that is going to go and take up a degree and just go for classes and graduate and then you want to get a job, see, that's what you chose. And at the end of the day, companies are going to look for the best candidate, right? But if you are a candidate who comes in, okay, you get that degree. That's it. I mean, you go through that formal education. It's a must anyway. So you go through that. And at the same time, you keep yourself busy with certifications. And OK, let's see. Money is an issue here in certifications. Um, you go and look at practicals, like what Dr. Julia was saying, internship, job shadowing, competitions. Now, every single competition that you put yourself into, you're going to learn something out of it. You're exposing yourself. So with that much of experience, I mean, you choose to do that or not to do that. So at the end of the day, that is how you become marketable, increasing your market value here. I mean, you need to have the basics, that's for sure. But basic alone is not enough. 
just like if you talk about architecture, knowing how to put the bricks together and cementing them is not enough for you to build a big building there. You got to look at different aspects as well. So it's really at the end of the day up to you how you take on this journey. A bachelor degree is a must. Certification, go for it. Now, I know there's many, many, many thousands and thousands of certification out there. Based on my experience as a trainer, let me tell you this. You don't, and what Dr. Julia said, you don't need to take all. Okay, it's not a basket of all certification here. And plus, if you have a certification, that doesn't mean you are skilled. Really. At the end of the day, it goes to what are you taking up in that certification? There are many different niche areas there. Look at what you're interested in. You don't have to take all. Basket of all doesn't do you good. So look for certification. And let's say you're talking about ethical hacking here. Find one that not just give you theory, hands-on practical as well. Real tools, using them, trying them out, not just theory. So that is again on you. I mean, if you ask us, we would definitely give you advices, which to do I mean, based on our experience. But you also have to do your research at the end of the day. Look for which one that really helps you at the end of the day. Add these values into yourself. The job is yours, right? So now, moving on to the, uh, I, I think this is the final part of the uh, session. Uh, why did I tell, why did I choose to say all these things to you is because, again, it comes back to your skill and mindset. I mean, at the end of the day, you can take a degree in cybersecurity. Again, if you don't have these skills and the right mindset, then you're going to come up and say that, look, I can't get a job here. So look at some, this is not all, but some essential. Number one, you need to have good communication skills here, even as cybersecurity experts here. We're not talking about those experts sitting behind the room and, you know, programming, coding, coding. No, you've got to be a people person as person as well, because we are looking at cybersecurity here. If a company wants to hire you, protecting their systems, accessing their details, they need to know whether you can communicate. So if your communication skill is a problem, how are they going to be confident enough to trust you to deal with their company? That's number one. Number two, of course, security principles, which you cover at the very basic of your degree. You need those theory, theories, right? Integrity and discretion here, yeah, that's definite. This is another thing that we may have not touched it very uh, uh, detail here, but let me tell you this. If you want to be a cybersecurity expert in any field, you got to make sure you stay off whatever that is unlawful because nobody's going to hire you with bad records. Integrity and discretion is important here. Ability to work in teams. Cybersecurity jobs most of the time is in team. Either you're part of the team or you lead the team. There's no single-handed uh, solo here which in APU, you also do that. I mean, you work in groups, and there you test yourself and how you deal with conflicts. Risk analysis. The term is very detailed here, I mean, very sophisticated, but take a very simple example. How do you perform risk analysis in your daily lifestyle? Like you want to go to work today, there's jam or there's an accident here. How do you mitigate that? Or your car, there's a problem in your car engine. Let's say there's an issue with your car today and you've got to get to the meeting today. How do you manage your risk? Take that car, drive, get stuck in the jam and miss the meeting. Things like that from basic. And lastly, problem solving. I mean, we have that in our daily life, right? If your phone doesn't work anymore, what do you do? Throw it away and buy a new one. If you have the money, of course, right? Or if you can't, you'll try to figure it out yourself. So these are basic skills and mindset you need. Because at the end of the day, you can be in cybersecurity. You can take the degree. Let me tell you, the degree alone is not enough. And I think in APU here, we have a wonderful experience that we share with you. Not to forget the facilities. I think you look at that, you watch the video in the very beginning. The facilities, that is how you decide what kind of a cybersecurity professional that you're going to be at the end of the day. Okay? Because you have to look at what are the available facilities, the available um, uh, features, the education, the support. All this has to be taken into consideration at the end of the day. So when you graduate, you have to always assess yourself how good of a cybersecurity candidate I am. But if you're really looking at those who go 9 to 5, go to class and come back, finish up your assignment and examine all these things, you are going to have a problem. All right? So 
uh, what what we have left what's next yeah here are some career options here but we showed you this before and i think along the way during the talk we've also touched on this there's a lot analysis based on your different level meet fresh or advanced level you can look through all these things so these are the career option and also uh, what you take up or what you venture which niche area that you choose at the end of the day will result in which career options that you have trust me i would confidently say this is the one area that produces multiple options of career here i think dr julia touched on it just now we have compliances i mean you're in cyber security you don't want to look at the hacking or the technology look at the compliance they pay you a huge sum exactly. look at the uh, consult consultants look at the risk look at the governance amazing job. Don't, don't, don't expect to become uh, if you are a fresh graduate don't expect to become a chief technology officer oh. definitely <laughs> i don't expect to become a chief information security officer you of <laughs> course you need to start with uh, at least 5 to 10 years of experience uh, then only you can move yourself to manager level okay to the uh, cto or cso level okay don't aim directly to those uh, higher management level yet okay equip yourself with enough experiences in the field okay get yourself certified with all those related professional certificate in your focus area after you have decide to focus on that particular area you take all the certification related to that area okay then you can venture to other career options as well if you think of expanding your your area of expertise and so on Yep, so at the end of the day, it's really about experience. And we're talking about experience not just when you go out there and work, right from where you start, where you start your degree. Right from that, that very moment. All right, so that I think will be it. Let's show you some takeaway points here. At the end of the day, guys, remember career in cybersecurity is ever growing and it will continue to grow. Trust me. The demand is higher than the supply. We're not supplying enough candidates here. So make use of this leverage, this moment, and take it up. There are many areas here, which is why uh, I think Dr. Julia said the uh, master's program. We have many students coming from accounting, medicine, even because we need cybersecurity there. And those students are their basic knowledge in accounting or, or medical, they're all set. So they want to study cybersecurity. Yeah. Like equip yourself with the necessary uh, skills, expertise, experience increase your market value out there is still a competition the future is now equip yourself with that now all right guys with that i think we have reached the end of our session i think we can um uh, take in a few questions right now all right thank you so much all right so we have a lot of questions coming in from all our audience but for myself, actually, I have something to ask because since you guys have mentioned a lot on the certifications, so I would like to ask, if let's say I study a degree program, especially degree in APU, our cybersecurity degree program, the knowledge that I learn, is it sufficient enough for me to get a seat for all the certification exam? Uh, I think... Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Julia. Yeah, it's okay, you can answer. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, when you're taking a degree program in cybersecurity, so you have to really look at what kind of certification are you looking at, because certain certification are high level technical. The technical level is quite high. For example, we have the um, RCC uh, as well. We have the CEH as well. All these things. Now, uh, basically, if you pass your first year, like what we have spoken before, the first year is where you gather your foundation. So, if you pass your first year, you know what's a network. You know what's an IP. You know what's a server. So you know all these kind of things, then you can go into the training certifications available. Because they are not going to go and sit there and explain to you what is networks here. They're not going to explain what is IP. Because trainings are usually five days, usually. right? So for, for students, they break it down into longer processes to fit in their schedule here. But again, you need the basics. So I would say after your first year, that would be a good time. I mean, when it comes to final year, it would also be a good time because certain certifications uh, do expire. Like they last for, especially in cybersecurity, by the way, because the only reason why it expires is because technology are evolving. So two years, uh, usually the, the, the duration is two years. So two years later, it expires. But then again, it doesn't mean you have to retake the certification. 
you can just sit for another exam with the updated content provided to you so that you're always up to date with that certification. So I would say after the first year. All right. Just to add on, just to add on a bit, um, if you ask me about the content in our modules, whether it is enough or sufficient for the students to sit for the certification or not, for me, the answer is yes and no. Okay, it depends on how you uh, study on that particular given topic in your class. You don't expect your lecturer to cover everything in depth about that particular topic. You as a student, you as a cybersecurity student, you have to have the uh, uh, need to know uh, mindset. In you. Yeah, inquisitive. Yes, exactly. So all the things, all the all the topics that have been covered in the class, definitely not enough because we only have 14 weeks. Okay, we only have maybe we can cover only several tools or several uh, basic exercises in the class. So what you need to do is to go and find any available websites or any other available resources for you to practice on your own and then prepare yourself for, for the certification program. Okay, but I, I can assure that if you really go through the basic uh, foundation, like Dr. Vinisha mentioned just now, definitely on the theoretical part and also on how do you want to first launch the technical or practical part, you already have it in your in your hands. Okay, okay. all right. So uh, we have one audience over here, uh, Mr. Ahmed. Which one is better in cybersecurity market, having a master degree or getting more certification in that field? Plus a bachelor degree, or should I just go for certification instead of going for a degree program? Mm, that's a very interesting question here, but I'm going to say it really goes back to what you want and how did you uh, take on the journey in the beginning. Yeah. Now, like I said, cybersecurity is a huge area. You have to ask yourself again, what do you want at the end? See, you can't just say I want to do cybersecurity. Yes, that's the first step. But after that, through your experience, you need to know what you really want. Because certain jobs like compliance and um, governance, you have to be certified. It's a, it's a, a what, what we call this, it's a necessity. It's needed. Now, why do we go for master's degree? Now, that again is a career advancement there, right? You have a degree that are certain jobs that is given to you, that your options are limited. When you take up a master degree or like a PhD later on, your job scope becomes wider. But that doesn't mean you don't need the skills that you need to acquire from certification for that particular job. So again, you have to go back and ask yourself this. What do I really want? Where do I want to see myself at the end of the day? Is the skills important? But to me, if you ask me as a growing person, if you grow in a career advancement, you definitely need the skills. If you want to sit as a top guy, in any company, you need to know what the others know before sitting there. You need to know the whole book. Only then you can sit there and lead and charge, right? So ask yourself this. I mean, we have some students who take up a bachelor degree. They take up certifications to equip themselves. Then they take up master's degree to keep them at an advanced, le uh, advanced level in professionalism. They're looking at consultants. You're looking at managers, assistant managers here. So it's a two to it's a one to one thing that has to go hand in hand, and pick the right certification. So getting more, I'm 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 highlighting at that that line there. Getting more certifications in that field, no, the answer is no. You can have ten, ten certifications in that field, and another one comes along with five, and he's good. He knows what his job. I'm going to hire the one with five. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we go to the next questions. So, Mr. Fahim, can AI replace cybersecurity job? If AI can, is this a threat for cybersecurity experts? Um, basically, uh, the answer also still yes and no. Okay, some of the job, some of the tasks, yes, can be replaced, not really replaced 100% by the AI. If you say um, artificial intelligence is like um, compensating the skills or technical skills that still needed coming from the professional, coming from a human, okay? So let's say, for example, if I have a, uh, a SIEM, okay, in an SOC, okay, some of the um, uh, next generation SIEM, okay, basically is uh, equipped with AI functions, okay? So why these AI functions are uh, important is because it can learn on the advanced behavior of the malware, for example, yes, so it, 
but in order for you to to uh, configure those um, uh, details, those uh, cause of action, those indicators of compromise, you still have to have human expert in order for you to verify, okay? Because somehow AI is machines, okay? So even though machine is very good, okay, they can be very productive, it can be very efficient, but at the end of it, um, you still need cybersecurity experts in, in terms of validation of whether it's correct or whether it is, uh, uh, how to say, um, uh, sufficient or not uh, for for the system to 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 take upon into how it reacts to the to the results. Okay, so if AI can, this is this a threat for cybersecurity expert? I think um, not really a threat, but it can help a security cybersecurity expert to to learn more and to to expand more on their. Uh, uh, how to they, how can they use the technologies in in, in helping them to to uh, solve those uh, detection and prevention problems or cybersecurity incidents? Okay, so it's not a, really a threat, but it will be a very helpful for the cybersecurity expert instead. Let me add on that. Do, do we still have time, Mr. Long? Yeah, yeah can go ahead. No okay. Um, what uh, as what Dr. Julia said here now um, AI can replace cybersecurity jobs, right? Can, not all of them. Let me give you these examples. Let me give you this example. Have you heard about this called dark trace? Mm. Now, dark trace, search on it, Google it. It's one of the most powerful intrusion not detection and also prevention. It, it's built on AI, right? It works in mitigation, in mitigating attacks. It's self-learning, amazing tool. I mean, with that in place, it's definitely going to replace some uh, cybersecurity jobs in your company. But guess what? Guess what the problem is? To purchase a dark trace uh, product into your company, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Definitely a lot of money. So if your company is doing that well and you're willing to invest that, it's fine. But here we go again. We're talking about many businesses out there. Exactly. Right, which may not afford these things. I mean, I don't see it's going to be any cheaper any soon because how dark trace work is due to AI, you have database signatures, machine learning, a lot of things. So it is cost benefit. They did the cost analysis, right? So because of that, other company, other organization, there are still many out there which do not use dark trace. He will still need cybersecurity jobs here, but with those kind of AI in place. I mean, for me, it really motivates you to go further and be better than the AI. Don't you think so? <laughs> so, yeah, that's my two cents. All right. So, hope for him you understand. Okay, we go to the next one. What is the basic salary range for cybersecurity staff in the market? It actually depends on the area as well. And also, if you're saying about, if you're talking about uh, fresh graduate, okay, fresh graduate in Malaysia, okay, um, if you're asking me, fresh graduate basically range from 2,500 ringgit to 4,000 ringgit Malaysia. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Vinesha. But I think that's the basic salary range for fresh graduate. Doesn't matter if you're coming from cybersecurity or you're coming from computer science or you're coming from artificial intelligence, basically that's the basic salary range, lah. okay? But it depends also on the organization, if it's a big company, okay? Mm. Even I have students that being offered to work in Bank Negara Malaysia, okay? So in Bank Negara Malaysia, even though he's a, a fresh graduate student, he, he got the offer of 5K, okay? 5,000 yeah. Malaysia as a fresh graduate. So actually, it also depends on that area, okay, whether that area really in need of cybersecurity professionals, or it also depends on what are the uh, professional certificates that you might have, okay, and also it depends on the organization, okay. If it is a big organization, definitely you can request for more. If it is just a small organization, it is a startup company, small businesses, definitely you have a lower uh, salary range, lah. Dr. Vinisha, would like to ask uh, to add anything? Yeah. I wanted to add one thing though. <laughs> um, sure, sure. Yes, if you're talking about uh, what new cybersecurity stuff, I'm going to assume that you're talking about fresh graduates. But if, like I said before, you you are really 
what you want to be. I mean, it's your choice how you groom yourself into towards your degree. If you are that equipped, that good, companies have no choice but to pay you. So that's what you got to look for. You understand? The bargaining comes onto your end instead of the company's end. You're that good that the company don't that they need you and they have to pay you. So we have a, a few students, in fact, in, in APU, of our students were actually earning quite good. And um, I also have this one student, I mean, within two years, he, two to three years, I think below five years, he became a cybersecurity manager. Exactly. Exactly. That good. So, like I said, this is not any other courses for you to have to follow the pace and everything. You you control your own pace. You want to be that good? Do the job. You want to be average? Do your normal job. So, it comes back to you. You can really earn that much if you push it forward. But if not, then like what Dr. Julia said, you're looking at an average market value. Two to four, four, five, with a degree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do actually have a friend actually being hired by Grab. With three or four years of experience, his her salary actually is eighteen thousand a month. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Look so to the experience again. Very limited. So that's why now is the chance for you to to grab it. Yeah. Mm. So okay, next will be Mr. Dash. I have a question. Is it safe to say that every few have some form? that encompass cybersecurity? For instance, bank and IT companies are common, but what about like the entertainment industry? I actually don't get his question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a form that encompasses cybersecurity? What form are you talking about here? I mean... Uh, are you, are you, are you uh, saying that all uh, field or all areas should have cybersecurity? Or maybe he's talking about standards, different standards or levels of security. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, 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 what I understand maybe is besides bank and IT company, where else they can go? What kind of industry requires cybersecurity? I think all types of industry. All, all, all types of industry. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. let's Definitely. not talk about industry. Let's heard, talk about... If you have heard of the Sony Entertainment, okay, where the data breach happened, okay, that's actually an entertainment industry. Okay, Sony Sony Entertainment got got hacked. Okay, basically we call it as a nation state sponsor attack. Okay, and they say it's because of the, the interview movie. Just Google for the for the cybersecurity incident that happened. Okay, uh, it happens to Sony Entertainment. Okay, so one day they plan to to uh, release the movie named The Interview. Okay, and basically the movie is about the assassination of the uh, president of North uh, Korea. Okay, and then what they, what happened to them is that they get hacked. Okay, so all the details, all the all the uh, entire databases of the movies, of uh, the credentials of the employees get get exposed. Okay, so that's what we see as the importance of cybersecurity, not only in IT or in bank industry, but also towards entertainment. Even the ransomware also happens towards the healthcare industry. Okay, the ransomware, the wanna cry. So basically, every field. Okay, to answer your question, it, it is safe to say that every field needs cybersecurity. That's to agree what Dr. Vinisha mentioned just now. So it's a huge field. Okay, it's a huge field. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm not just a field here. It's not just field dash, it's both you and me. We are all at risk. Yes. Individual yes. even. <laughs> yep. So, okay, Mr. Lee actually have two questions over here. One is, is cybersecurity hard to study? And the second one is, will FBU provide more practicals on cybersecurity instead of just only theory? Okay, let me take this one, then I'll pass it to you, Julia. <laughs> cybersecurity is hard to study. Again, it depends on you. If you expect everything to be spoon-fed, it's going to be damn hard. Very hard. Okay? Because why? You expect something to be put in for you on a platter? No. How it goes is this way. We guide you. We tell you. We bring you around the field. You know, we hand-holding, you know, go around the field. But somehow or rather, one, when the time comes, when the point where your basic is fine, your foundation is fine, you have to take a leap. You have to really take a leap. 
and you have to go do more reading, more researching, more trying on tools and so on. And the second question was uh, more hands-on practical, right? As I said before, programs are designed in a way where it has to fulfill certain criteria to ensure our students are equipped, not only in practical, we're talking about the entire uh, dimension here, including professionalism, uh, thinking, critical thinking, research. So those are, uh, these are the way how programs are developed. All right, and we as educators, we have to ensure that all our students have a bit of everything here and there, right? So this is how programs are created. Now, we do have practicals in uh, modules, like ethical hacking, forensic and so on. So these practical are designed well, gone through moderation, gone through lots of phases to, to look at it in a way that it is sufficient for the student to take up. Now, when you're looking for more, now educators, even in APU, they are very helpful most of the time. When we see potentials or students who really want to go for more, we can guide you. We'll say, hey, go through this channel. Look at this, try this out, try this too. But those are good efforts from the student who's willing to learn more, but you got to take a leap on that. You got to fly solo on your own. That's how you go. But we'll be always there to help you. I agree with Dr. Vidisha. We, we actually really provide a lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, not only in class. I mean, you have lecture, you have labs, okay? And basically it's already, uh, I mean, it already gone through a lot of moderation process. And then to make sure that the lab practical, to make sure the, the, the assignment fulfill the learning outcomes that are being set for that particular module normally. But we also provide the students with uh, weekend courses, uh, the external training, the webinars, the seminars, the trainings, all those are opportunities that normally module lecturers or the lecturers in APU doesn't 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 matter whether it's coming from cybersecurity, it can be coming from uh, data science or artificial intelligence. So there are a lot, there are hundreds and thousands of um, training and workshops and basically all those trainings and workshops are keep happening every day and every week in APU. So it depends back to the student whether you are willing to go for those extra effort, those extra classes, those extra workshops being provided or not. You have to take the opportunities. You have to look at it at a, at a wholesome, wholesome experience here. You can't just look at your nine to five classes. It's everything as it is. So as long as, imagine if you keep yourself, you're going to workshops and trainings and all this, plus your teaching and learning, your TL, your lecture classes and lab, you will already feel overwhelmed. But when you yeah. don't do yeah. that, that's when you feel like, oh my God, is it enough? Am I doing enough in the class? Is my lecture enough? Is my practical enough? See, that's where it comes in. Even yeah. competitions as well. Competitions are important as well. Doesn't mean that you join the competition in order for you to win, okay? <laughs> but you join the competition is just for you to gain the uh, experience, okay? What are the latest tools? What are the latest technologies? What are the latest uh, case scenario in the, in the cyber world? So it's for your own good, okay? So if you have any competitions, doesn't matter whether it's internal, whether it's a, a national level or international level, just go, go ahead and join the competition. Build a team no. with your friends, just join. Yeah. Don't worry about winning or losing. Yes. Nobody looks at you. Nobody cares. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because as long as you put yourself there, you are there. You apply the knowledge you have learned, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Okay. Seems like maybe we have uh, understand correctly on Mr. Dash question just now. He, he actually really asking about what industry actually needed cybersecurity. All right. So now we go to the next questions. Okay, is computer science degree without specialism in cybersecurity able to allow me to get into cybersecurity career field? I will take that, I guess. Uh, uh, specialism in cybersecurity allow me to get into the cybersecurity career field depends. Okay, again, I have students, okay, coming from computer science, okay, major in computer science, doesn't have any specialism in cybersecurity, doesn't have uh, any specialism in digital forensic, but this student is really good in the programming skills, okay, mm. in web development. So eventually, his skill and his knowledge in the in the programming part, okay, helps him to 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 become the expert in the area of certain area, certain niche in cybersecurity as well. Like like what Dr. Vinisha mentioned, there's a lot of career options available. 
Uh, you can be a software security analyst as well. You can be a web application uh, specialist. All those are, maybe you're not coming from uh, cybersecurity specialism, but you are coming with the strong and solid foundation because it doesn't matter if you are a computer science student, doesn't matter if you're AI student, or doesn't matter if you're information or IT student, as long as you have made, um, uh, how to say, master the basic or fundamentals of the computer system, it should be fine. Okay, you can go and venture yourself into cybersecurity career field. Get uh, get to get uh, to to know more about cybersecurity by joining those trainings, workshop, uh, fundamental certification. Like I mentioned just now, ISACA, we have a fundamental certification for you just to try yourself on uh, uh, the basic uh, knowledge on cybersecurity, the confidentiality, the integrity, the availability, all those stuff. Okay, no no problem. Okay, without specialism in cybersecurity, you still can go into the cybersecurity career field. Even if you want to go into master in cybersecurity, we have provided you with the prerequisite, yeah, prereq module. Okay, just to prepare yourself. Okay, you might come from um, uh, finance, you might come from medicine, you might come from engineering with no knowledge in cybersecurity at all. So these prereq modules, okay, or even you can prereq yourself. Okay, you can prepare yourself with those uh, basic knowledge in cybersecurity. It's all available throughout the websites, throughout the the blogs and so on. So no no issue. No issue, you can get into cybersecurity career field anytime. But actually, it, it involves a lot of self-learning, right? It's yeah, better exactly. to you, for you to have a specialism in cybersecurity because you really have the knowledge to get, forget yourself exactly. into that field. But yes. not to say that you just only study a cybersecurity, uh, computer science, you can't go for that. You can, but you need a lot yeah. of self-learning. Yeah, yeah, I right? mean, for those who already have a computer science degree, I mean, you can't back out, right? So that's what you do. You you certify yourself. Slowly venture into cybersecurity or perhaps take a master in cybersecurity. You still can enter because you have basics. And this time your basic is three years, computer science, right? Yeah. So you yeah. still can. So for those of you who are already in computer science field, you want to come back to cybersecurity, the doors are always open. Yeah. And again, okay. it depends on you. It depends on you, like what Dr. Vinesha mentioned just now. Either you want to self-enhance yourself or you just want to stay at that particular level for two or three years. Okay, so if you think you want to, to further enhance yourself, go for the certification, go for the, all those uh, extra classes, self-learn and so on. Okay, else you just stay wherever you are right now and then just earn a basic amount of salary. Okay, so maybe we're going to end our session now. Um, I, I understand that there's a lot more questions uh, coming in, but we're not able to answer everyone. But fear not, because if you have our open day this weekend on 11 and 12 July from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we welcome you to come to join us to visit our campus. Because if you have world class facilities and also cybersecurity range labs over here, so come to visit us, come to ask our counselors to, to answer all your questions over here, and also the pathway available for you. All right, so today's session we're going to end here. Um, Dr. Julia and Dr. Vanessa, is there anything else you want to add in before we end? Mm, I, I feel the students, if you, have all, if you all have any other questions that you would like to ask or you would like to know more, feel free to email me, okay? Feel free to email Dr. Vinesha, okay? Both of us are willing to help to answer all those uncertainties and so on. It doesn't matter whether you are coming from cybersecurity area or not from cybersecurity area. Yep. Okay. So, okay, remember guys, on 9th July, Thursday, we have two more sessions going on. At 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., we have our APU alumni, Jen Wong, to share with you on rethinking university life as a student. Jen Wong actually is an entrepreneur, online strategist, and also youth advocate. He is listed on Fort 30, under 30 Asia list, and also recognized as one of the top 10 new generation business leaders in Malaysia. So while at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., we have importance of postgraduate studies in the post-COVID-19 employment. Like for example, those that actually have completed your computer science, but because now the field going towards on specialism in cybersecurity, for example, you want to get into cybersecurity field, you can join our master in cybersecurity, all right? So stay tuned and follow our Facebook page for more updates. Once again, come join us our APU Open Day on 
weekend 11 to 12 july from 9 a.m to 5 p.m so thank you everyone for joining us tonight bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.